you've come to the right place. If you're a course creator looking to build more impact, income, and freedom, LMS Cast is the number one podcast for course creators just like you. I'm your guide, Chris Badgett. I'm the co-founder of the most powerful tool for building, selling, and protecting engaging online courses called Lifter LMS. Enjoy the show. Hello and welcome back to another episode of LMS Cast. I'm joined today by a special guest. His name is Keegan Lanier. You can find him at keeganlanearmedia.com. He's got a course up at academy.keeganlanearmedia.com. Welcome to the show, Keegan. Hey, thanks for having me. You know, occasionally I run across people that I have like a lot in common with. And, you know, we're both podcasters. You're also the host of the, the, um, Divi Addicts podcast, That's right. and you've been doing that for a couple of years. You're a course creator. You're about eight years in WordPress, just like me, and you've been, um, you know, you, you do agency work. So we, we've, we've had a lot, we do a lot of the same things. You're looking, you're creating a recurring revenue business with your website safety plan, and uh, you're also just providing incredible value to clients who don't want to mess around and get knee deep in the tech unless they want to. So you got, you're just covering WordPress and Divi and business sites and you're creating your own products. You got a lot going on. Welcome to the show. Hey again, thanks for having me, man. It's uh, a, <laughs> yeah, there is definitely a lot going on. <laughs> Understand. Well, let's start at the podcast. Like what's, what's yeah. the podcast about and where did that come from? And, I mean, it's a good, it's a great way to create content these days, but how that happened for you? So, you know, Anchor, I played around with Anchor uh, in multiple versions. And when they hit, I don't remember the version number, but they hit it to where they really took the kind of the audio Twitter and transitioned into, we're going to focus on podcasts. So I was like, well, you know, it's a perfect time. It's in my pocket. It's something easy to create. I can play around with it. Maybe it catches traction. Maybe it doesn't, but at least I've experimented. And two years later, I'm still going strong. The whole concept originally, uh, if you remember, for anybody who's deep in the Divi audience or in the in the community, they were doing the um, like the feature previews because they were they hit this this run a couple years ago where it was like every week they were just releasing new features, whether it was find and replace, copy and paste, all all their their workflow efficiencies. And so originally, the first few episodes were all about this is the sneak peek they gave this week. So it's just kind of covering Divi news and it's grown and it's become more, you know, more focused on Divi, like mastering Divi, taking it to the next level, business tips. Uh, sometimes it's just like state of business and, and mentality things. And it's, it's really just kind of a million different paths have come off of it. And I, whatever I feel like talking about, it's always going to be WordPress and Divi related, but it's the contents all over the place at times. Well, that's in a, cool. in what I hope is a good way. <laughs> and it's on a, um, it's on anchor.fm. Like you don't have an associated WordPress website, right? You can go to diviatics.com. And it's yeah, there, but, it. but you don't have like a, you didn't take the time to build a, a WordPress site for your podcast, which I think is cool. Like you, yeah. you're like, I'm just going, anchor is going to handle the tech, even though you could. I mean, yeah. this is a, the reason I, the reason I think that's cool is because you're so busy. I mean, when we first yes. launched Lifter LMS, I used lead pages to put up the landing page <laughs> because ah, I was in a hurry. And no sometimes a, so a software or SaaS tool just, I mean, go for speed. Not everything Absolutely. has to be WordPress, right? Yes. And so many people, like, they, like you said, they'll go out and build a full site for it. I, what I did, actually, I do have them on my site, but I create... I, I, put in a plugin that just pulls everything as the RSS feed updates. It creates it as a draft inside the back end of my main site. So you can go there and see, you know, the archives, but it's literally just an embedded version of the podcast show notes and then links to where you can find it on Spotify and Stitcher and you know, pocket cast and things like that. That's but cool. I do know, I do no work. It takes me like two minutes to turn <laughs> on a, a podcast episode. It had to be quick and efficient. Oh, uh, super cool. And, uh, I know a lot of people in the course building community are looking at podcasts because they're for many, depending upon your style, myself included, like it's way faster and create bigger content than writing a blog post. How much time do you yeah. spend on your podcast a week? Just to, yeah. like, 
however long the episodes are, I literally like I get in anchored. They really do make it so easy. So like I've got the, the intro music already saved in the library. I go in, I hit record, I do an intro, I add that into it. Then I drop in the music and then I'll put in a couple little breaks and then record the main body and an outro. And literally if the podcast is 10 minutes, I probably take 10 and a half minutes because it takes me a little bit to, to put the show notes together and the copy and schedule it. And that's it. Like I scheduled five episodes in maybe 45 minutes to an hour um, this past weekend. So it's not, it doesn't take much time. It's a great way to create content without having to take hours and hours and hours. That's awesome. And in, mm-hmm. in the Lifter LMS community, we run into a lot of Divi fans. What do you love <laughs> about Divi? And it, it's the flexibility, you know, it's like they, whenever you first install it, it, it's blank. You know, it's a canvas. It's white. It's not flashy. It's not pretty in its base form, but it's a canvas that you can do anything with it. You know, you've got the ability to add in custom classes. If you know a little bit of, of JavaScript or jQuery and, and CSS, you can, you can make it do whatever you want it to do, you know, and it's, it being just such a big theme to the community is incredible. So like whenever I try and or when everybody asks me about it, the first thing I say above the fact that it's a good product, because it really is, uh, is the community. You know, that the people are so, they're just nice. They're good people and they want to help. You know, they want to share their knowledge and their experience on the platform. So it's uh, that, the product drew me in, the community kept me here. That's cool. Who are some people just that you'd give a shout out to in the Divi community? Sure. The godfather of the Divi tutorials is Gino Kiros. Um, he's, he's been around for quite a while. Uh, David Blackman and Tim Streifler are two guys that I have a lot of respect for. Uh, talk to them a lot. I actually did their, their Divi Business Experts course. Phenomenal course, by the way. Um, and, and Josh Hall, another guy who's just doing a lot of great things the course, in the course community. Like he's, doing, he's doing a lot of stuff. I think he's got a bundle, maybe like eight or nine courses now. And uh, got a podcast started now, too. He's another one that's just... Uh, busting his butt that's awesome well tell us the story of your course which is divi foundation so who's it for where'd the idea come from what is it all about this is the i think the the beginnings of the idea came i was working as a white label developer for this marketing agency and the guy can you uh, can you unpack that i think some people don't realize that they can build websites sure in that way so what do you mean exactly by white label for a marketing agency For sure. So essentially what I did is like I was reaching out to this brand, the way this particular situation came out, I was just Facebook messaging uh, some brands that I knew one of it was a karate, uh, a karate school. So I sent them a direct message and didn't even think that somebody else or an an agency may be managing their social at the time. Well, the guy reached out to me. He's like, Hey, look, you know, I don't work directly with them, but I do run this agency. I'm looking for people to build sites. Would you want to work with me? I'm like, yeah, sure. I need money. Why not? So we, I partnered with him and essentially I build sites as a representation of his brand. Like I, I work for him, but not employed by him. So, so he brings contractor the contractor working through them. That's right. He, bring, he brings the leads and he manages the client. You build the site, right? You, you get to focus on building the site. Yes. Yeah. That's cool. What advice do you have for somebody on like that relationship? Cause I think that's kind of cool. Cause one of the most painful things in, in being a freelancer or an agency owner yourself is, doing wearing too many hats like getting new client leads and managing the client experience is a huge part and a lot of us myself included what i love most is building the site like what if you just want to build the sites all day like how do you how do you find that dream relationship build a list of agencies that you like and respect and then reach out to every single one of them Ah, french press i love it (laughs) Uh, i have a i have a friend of mine um, that I've worked with to another, another one of those agencies. And it's that relationship has been like the beauty of working as a white label for somebody else. is like you said, the, the lead generation and, and the project management thing, that part of it, you don't have to worry about. So anybody who's starting, like if you're just thinking about getting into this, it's the perfect way to do it. Build that list of people that you have an interest in working with and just cold email them. If you send a message to five or 10 of them, one of them's probably going to reply. And it's the best way to get into it because you can just build sites and then you can kind of pick their brain on their process. How do they manage pro- clients? What platforms do they use? How do they invoice? How often do they invoice? All those business management aspects. If you try and go all in on that stuff at once, it's a recipe to kick most people out who don't have the will to fight through it. 
That's awesome. Yeah. And if you're looking for help getting leads and you're happen to be a lifter LMS uh, person who's built a site before we have this lifter LMS experts program you can apply for. Just look for a link to that at the bottom of the website. It's free. We just want to help people who are focused on building course sites uh, get clients because we get asked all the time like, hey, do you know anybody that can build my site for me? I don't want to I want to create the course, but I don't want to do the tech. So these partnerships are out there. Uh, you just got to go for it. Um, tell us more about the course. What, yeah. So how to come out of this relationship being the white label partner? Yeah. So the guy asked me, he's like, man, look, I have a lot of people who are project managers and I'd like for them to be able to, to do some of the updates to sites once they're built. And uh, he's like, but they, they, a lot of them don't understand how to, how WordPress works or they don't have a, as much exposure to the platform. Could you do some videos for me? You know, could you do just the basics, how to update posts, how to create new pages, how that works with Divi? Cause I know you build it in that. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. And then I got to thinking, I was like, man, I can do some, like some more generic ones, put this stuff out there, create it as a course and make it repeatable where I can, you know, manage just making those individual 15 videos or however many it turns out to be making those the best they can be and updating them. And then it just continues to, to cycle. It started from there and then it, you know, there goes the research, which platform should I use? Find Lifter, yeah. makes the most sense. Great platform, so easy to build with. Thank you for that, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Appreciate it. Yeah, and then um, you know I put it on my 2019 goals at the end of 2018 that I was gonna launch in 2019, totally failed, that's okay. <laughs> Started again in 2020, put it back on the list, finally made it happen. <laughs> it always takes longer than you think. So, so what yeah. like, I like to think of courses as having starting points and ending points. When somebody, who's the perfect fit customer and how do they, when they enter, what's, what's life like? And when they exit the course, what's life like? Yeah. So for, for me, it's, it's, it's really kind of geared towards two different people. So it's either people who are in a job who are unhappy and looking to like have a creative bone in their body and have an interest in WordPress. They want to build websites. They know that they've heard you can make money in it. It's, it's for them and it's for, it's for bootstrapping business owners. Somebody who's just a, a single business owner doesn't have a lot of capital. Basically when they start, they can walk in saying, I have no idea about WordPress. I don't even know how to install it. I'm going to take them through like, this is how you buy a domain. This is the hosting that you can get. And here's why you want to spend a little bit more on it as opposed to going for the cheap one. You know, this is the additional benefits you're going to get from it. Here's how you tie those things together. Here's how you make sure it's secure. You know, these are the functionalities of WordPress. These are the basics of Divi. And this is how you connect everything to Google so that you can be found, make sure that people can find your site. And here's a few best practices, of what you need to do on that site to be found. So one thing they can come in with, I mean, having no idea what they're doing, no idea how to, to use WordPress. And when they're done, they should be at the core, like the, the foundation. That's why I call it the foundation course. Like they should have all the basics in place. That's what they need to start really taking things to the next level. Then they can get fancy and we can, I've got different avenues we can go after this, but it'll give them the basics they need to build a good house on top of it. And that's what people need. If you're just wanting to get into the game and maybe explore building websites as, for clients or you're a DIY build your own website type of person, the place where people get stuck in the quicksand is too many options. Like, okay, well, there's hundreds of hosting companies and thousands of themes and thousands of plugins and all these different ways to approach how to build a website. It's overwhelming. So people need a guide and yep. uh, jump in, getting a, getting a guide to build that foundation. And with a, a highly curated set of tools, like you said, you've been in this for almost a decade, like lean on somebody's decades worth of experience so you don't waste time and money with the wrong stuff. Right. A hundred percent. I say that multiple times throughout that course and, and in all the content I put out, I just wish that I would have had somebody that said, look, I'm gonna grab you by the hand. Let's go. Cause I mean, I tried so many things and spent, spent money that I didn't have to spend on things that ultimately were never going to work for me. So, yeah, I know there's a reason behind why I use what I use now and I know it works together. Well, what's the, what is the stack that you use to create your course? Like, or I'm just curious, like, like screen sharing, what's, what tool do you yeah. use? Like, do you have talking head in it or not? Did you, right. uh, video camera, microphone, and then the main like WordPress plugins and theme or whatever that you use. 
Yeah, so I am uh, I mean, recording on a MacBook. Uh, I use ScreenFlow to record the screen. I've got a Logitech, um, I don't know, Logitech cam up here. So yeah, there's little, little heads in the bottom. I did ScreenFlow so I could do picture in picture. Uh, hosting on Flywheel. Divi is the theme. I used uh, obviously Lifter. Uh, there's on the, on the site itself. There's also connections with easy digital downloads because I have layouts and some different things in there. So there's uh, it's it's pretty basic as far as that site goes. You know, I, I think uh, I picked up a child theme from from Aspen Grove Studios or Divi Space because yeah. they they had done a ton of um, customization for some of the things, some of the different parts of, of Lifter as well. So again, going back to speed, I was like, I could have done it, but. Let me uh, let me find somebody else who can supercharge the timelines. Did that, and then I've, I've spent the time actually um, custom building out that that my account dashboard. That was um, like my little baby in the project. It was one of those things I had the most fun building. And yeah, then that, uh, all the videos were hosted on Vimeo. Nice, and that's I mean that list of tools is like highly curated, like. I see so many people get like just sidetracked, but that's not that many tools just to make the magic happen. And you know, if you're not using a Mac, there's a PC screen recorder thing you can use. It's not the end of the world, but I love that stack. I love that, that approach. And I edited everything in iMovie. So okay. again, free, like it's, I try and build everything for efficiency. Just want to I'm curious. Quick. Why did you, why did you use iMovie to edit instead of ScreenFlow since you recorded in there? So I, I don't know. I just, it's the way I do everything inside of YouTube. Essentially, like I have these, these little templates that I've built in iMovie where it has, it has my, my intro animation where it's like the logo comes up and there's a little pop and it's really quick yeah. and I can just dice up the video. So the only thing I edit in ScreenFlow normally is like I'll record everything straight. I'll have the, the webcam at the bottom corner. So yeah. like for the intro, I'll drag that to where it's me like you're seeing right now. Full talking, talking full screen, and yeah. then I clip it, and then I bring it into iMovie, and then I just split it up and have the the mu outro music already in there, so I can just align it. It's just a, I don't know, I just found it to be a quick workflow for me. I like putting that talking head in the bottom corner, but I'm curious, why did you decide to do that? I, I wish I could say there was some big great reason as to why. Um, probably because I've seen other people take that formula, and I was like, you know, it's. If, if I had a brand that was just XYZ brand, it probably wouldn't make sense for me to do it. But I think because I decided to go with Keegan Lanier Media, I thought, you know, let's, let's let them see my face. Let them see, you know, it's more than hopefully it's, it, it, it looks like there's like a coming from a place of actual enjoyment and passion for what I'm doing. Cause I like genuinely want them to learn and be better. Not just uh, some robotic voice, like some of the YouTube videos that have no face, you know, now you're going to build the next <laughs> lesson. And look, you know, yeah. so that's just not me. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I think that's actually a great way to, to explain the value of that. Like, Level one is talking head, human to human, down in the corner, hopefully out of the way, not covering up everything on important. Then the next is like no talking head, and, but you know, narrated. Then the next is like that weird computer automated voice thing that I don't know where those videos come from. And then the next is like, have you ever gone to a piece of documentation that has a video with no sound? Like so, and so I'm not. there's a spectrum there of like, well, how engaging do you want the content to be? And how like human do you want it to be? If uh, that's just to make the case for people want to do business and learning between people. How do you get yeah. leads for this course? What's your, you said YouTube, you do a lot on YouTube or what's, what's. Yeah. I've, I've tried to make it a lot more of a focus this year. So two, I mean, there's, there's two main sources. Number one, I mean, the podcast, there's okay. a good bit of listeners are pretty, um, a pretty consistent, like almost every episode gets the same number of listeners, which is, I guess, a good and a bad thing. Like it makes me excited on one hand that people are coming back and, you know, it's the same number of people, but it's also not growing that much. So that's kind of, uh, but it's, hey, this it's is a, a niche podcast. I don't, my numbers are not huge, but the people who care, yeah. they really care. I mean, it's not, it's not all about Very having true. a viral podcast, right? Oh yeah. And I, that, I'm never concerned about that for sure. Uh, but that's the podcast is one and YouTube YouTube's actually probably more effective because people can, again, they can see me, they can hear me, they can see, you know, walking through the builds and then I always have it in the, in the, the links below and my links, like those things get clicked. I mean, I, I would have never really thought, you know, 
typically when I'm watching it, my, my behavior is not, let me go in the description and click through a bunch of links, but apparently I'm, I'm the oddball. A lot of people are clicking through them and going, checking out the course. So those, those two for sure. Do you, for your course, marketing it on the podcast, was it like an episode where you talked about it or you mention it in conversation in most episodes or there's like a specific call to action at the beginning or the end about the course? What so a it? little bit of, a little bit of all. Uh, <laughs> okay. I did, I did have one. So it was, it was kind of like, uh, I had one last year whenever it was on my 2019 goes, I'm like, yeah, we're going to launch this course this year. You know, this is, this is the stuff we're using. And of course I had to do another one in 2020 saying, oops, like, yeah. You remember that one. Um, so I did another one. I had an episode, but it was more, I tried to gear it rather than saying and making it real promotional saying, Oh, we're launching a course. Go check it out. It was more of, Hey, look, we went through the process. We, we, we built this course. We launched this course. Here's what we use. This is how we did it, you know, to where it was more, more educational than promotional. Yeah, that's cool. Well, you said it took longer than you anticipated. Like why? I mean, I'm just saying that's common, but like what yeah. happened in your case? Um, a lot of things. I think, you know, life happens. Um, I, it, what's interesting is I don't know, I don't know if we mentioned it yet, but like the, the website side of the business for me is, is all a side hustle. Like I have a full-time job. I work, you know, 40 to 50 hours in a, in a, as a regional uh, franchise coach for a restaurant group. So I've got oh, wow. 15 locations throughout the Southeast. And, uh, you know, this is all stuff that I do on the side. And so, you know, the day job has to take precedent at times. And, uh, you know, coronavirus is part of that. Our company growing a lot was part of that. But really, the biggest part, because I, I carve out time specifically for this thing, you know, for the, for the website development stuff. And it was there, was, a, there was a run at the end of last year and the beginning of this year where I was just, it was that, that super feast mode. Like I was just going, there were projects like crazy and I just had to focus on that ab above doing the course thing, which I was sitting in the back of my head the whole time. Like I really, really want to get back to this. So I had to stop, you know, stop taking some new projects. Cause I'm like, I, I got to do this. I want to do this as part of, it's going to happen. I'm not going to let it carry over one more year. Are you married? I am. So, okay. So, so you're married, working a full-time job. Do you have kids? No kids. <laughs> okay. You're married, working a full-time job, have an agency on the side and building digital products. What advice do you have for somebody who's doing the side hustle? Like this is not my main income stream to do it successfully without like burning out and, you know, losing the love of it and that kind of thing. Yeah. Man, you got to really want to do it. Drink yeah. a lot of coffee. <laughs> uh, you, it's, it's tough. You know, I mean, we, I think, as just people in general, we all go through cycles, you know, sometimes you're, you're really in it, you're, you're fired up, you're ready to roll. Uh, I think the biggest, the biggest thing is don't say yes to everything, you know, find the things that you are really, you really, really want to do. Like if you feel there's a calling to go do it, go do it. Uh, but don't feel like you have to say yes to everything. That's, that's probably the, the best and maybe the only way to manage the burnout. And when you feel like you need a break, like last night, just a side story, my wife comes in, she's like, I can always tell when you're a little on edge. She's like, you know, you, you start like your body language changes, your face changes. I'm like, yes, yeah, you just need to get up, get up and go walk, you know, just take a break. It's okay. Like the world's not going to end. The stuff's going to still be there. Just communicate and take care of yourself and you'll be okay. But you've got to, you got to really want to do it to be able to put in the additional time on top of 40 hours of a regular job. <laughs> and you have like a, you have an, a really interesting stack, which is agency work courses, DV layouts, which are digital products, right? Which is why you're using easy digital downloads. Yep. And um, you have a, a hosting option for clients so they don't have to get in the weeds with like setting all that up. They can just one stop, one shop with you, which I love. And then um, you have a, a website safety plan, which includes backups, updates, monitoring. And so you're, and you have a podcast. So there's like five things that, in the side hustle. Um, that's amazing. But what's your, what's your approach to that stack. It's not just like one thing, it's five things. What does that say, say about your personality or what the way you approach business? Tell us more about having these multiple offers and 
and projects within WordPress. I think it says that I like to chase a shiny red ball. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I, I, don't, I, you know, they all start, it's interesting because they don't start from a place of like, man, I really want to go do this hosting thing because I think I can get rich on it. Or, hey, I want to do layouts because I think I can make a ton of money on it. Uh, or I want to do courses because it's the hot thing right now. Like I've been thinking about it for two years, not just because it's, you know, because people can't go out and learn face to face. Um, I think it all starts for me just from a place of, I see an opportunity. Like there's people who ask me all the time, how do I build this in Divi? How do I, how do I create this type of layout? And I'm like, well, let me, let me go build one. Cause if one person's asking for it, there's probably hundreds of people who could use it. So let me go out there and build it. That way it's scalable for them. I can point them to this resource. You know, maybe it's a dollar or two or five for a layout. They can take it, import it easy. Um, same thing with the courses, you know, it's like people don't know how to use WordPress or the beginnings of Divi. So rather than, having a conversation or a call with them once or twice a week, you know, let's, let's do the course. We spend $89. They have access to it forever. They can reference it anytime they want. And it's, I think it goes, it goes back to two things. Like number one, I, I just have a genuine like want to help people. And then I'm always, number two is like, I'm always looking for efficiencies. How can I do things quicker? Or how can I help people quicker too? I guess they're kind of tied together. And those are, it just drew me to those things. And then the podcast was probably one of those that me jumping on the hype train because pod podcasts <laughs> were pretty, pretty big yeah. two years ago. And it, honestly, it was one of those, like, I'm going to try it out and see how it works. And you know, the, the stats were like, most people don't make it past 10 episodes. I'm like, well, I'm going to make it past 10 episodes. I might only make it to 10 and might quit, but you know, I'm going to make it to 10. And by the time I got to there, I was just, I don't know, it was fun because it kept me engaged. It was like my way of staying engaged in the news and what was brand new. So, you know, I do it as much for me as I do for if anybody decides to listen. I'd probably do it if nobody was listening. <laughs> That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And I love that idea that it's really driven by your customer and the people you're interacting with and, and your need to serve them efficiently. That totally makes sense. I mean, as soon as you start doing something with a client multiple times, like in terms of training or consulting, that's like course material right there, which you're, you're just a natural at picking up on. Um, what's the end goal? Like if you could wave a magic wand, do you like the mix of getting out in the world with the <clears throat> restaurants and uh, you know, this whole digital world, I call it clicks and bricks. Do you like yeah. the clicks and bricks or do you like uh, for now it's, it's great or uh, what, what's, where are you headed? Like what was, what would be the, the ideal state? And the, the ultimate goal is, is freedom. You know, it's a freedom of choice. I yeah. love like the, the career I've had in, in the restaurant industry is phenomenal. Like I've been doing it in one form or another since I was 15 years old, uh, flipping burgers in fast food or, you know, full service restaurants and managers or, you know, corporate office support or regional operation support, whatever role I've had in, in that industry, I've loved it. The restaurant industry is loaded with great people. I mean, it's, uh, it's been really good to me, but on the flip side of that, I have this, I have this creative itch that I've got to scratch. And um, I think ultimately I'd like to be location independent to be able to work from anywhere. You know, if my wife and I want to travel, we can do that. And, um, I just like working with clients. You know, you can take somebody's business and create something that, that can drive leads, be, you know, be a sales generator for them or be a really good like showpiece for their brain. You know, most of them don't even, like most people, especially in small businesses, don't even understand the value of what they're doing. They'll pay somebody, you know, usually, especially around me here, way too much for way too little of a product. And so like for me, I try to be the, the value, but ultimately I think my, my goal is to, um, is to do the, the website development stuff, grow that into a full-time gig, full-time income and transition. Yeah. Are you doing, um, do you do some of your own like lead gen for clients or is it like, is it local or you're mostly doing the white label agency stuff or both or what? It's a combination. Um, a lot, probably, 80% of it is done through other agencies. Actually, I have, um, 
one of my friends, it's kind of a, a unique, interesting situation. So I work, he does a lot of the, of the lead generation. He brings me the clients. I bill through him. So I bill him, he bills the client just like a traditional white label, but yeah. he's the, the clients still know that he's outsourcing. Like he's been open and very transparent. He's like, these, this is my web guy. You're this one of the vendors. Company. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. so like my, my tag's still at the bottom of the site, which is extremely odd for white label style. Work. <laughs> yeah. I don't deal with the clients ever. So it's like, I've got this really interesting, uh, cool dynamic going with this one. How do you manage uh, when you're white labeling and you're not boots on the ground, like listening to client feedback, how do you manage revisions? Or what, like if the client's like, yeah, we're close, but I kind of want to tweak it. And now it goes through somebody else or are they recording conversations or how does it work? They're not, man. So it's uh, a, a lot of Google documents, uh, okay. a lot of Google stuff. So like for every product or for every project, we've got its own shared folder you know it's got the media resources i keep them very organized there's like a brand standards folder there's site content and outline there's media folders there's even like we just launched your site i'm downloading the backup i'm going to drop it into there so if anything you know we've got backups that are happening nightly on your site but if anything just goes completely crazy and you know the world comes to an end we can put your site back in place so it's a, it's just a, it's a lot of trust, honestly, between me and that guy. We've known each other for about 20 years, the guy who runs yeah. the, uh, the agency. So I think we've got a pretty good working relationship. We figured out how to communicate a while back. So That's good. That's yeah. good. And what do you love about Flywheel when you do the, the hosting part? And Flywheel uh, recently joined the WP Engine family, like, I don't know, a year or two ago or something. Yeah, right around a year ago. But what do you, uh, what do you love about it in terms of, you know, providing the hosting to your client without them having to get in the weeds with it themselves. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a long list. I mean, number one, their, their, their servers are great. They're, you know, you can put side by side and I look at the stats pretty often, especially having different clients. Some of them don't host with me, you know, but I still manage uptime. Okay. Flywheel's uptime compared to some of the other ones like, like Bluehost and a few others that I've seen, um, it, it, I know it's different site specific, not necessarily a true representation of host versus host, but like their uptimes just seem to definitely be better and the, the site speeds are more consistent. So just the, just the product itself is great. Um, being somebody who's not necessarily a designer, but has a design eye and, and is like dialed into efficiency. I love their dashboard. It's just, it's silly, simple. It's so easy to start a new website. You know, having the agency plan, I've got a direct account manager who's phenomenal. I, I don't know that I've ever emailed him and him not reply within five minutes. You know, the support team is legitimately the best I've ever dealt with. Uh, is it the cheapest? Definitely not. But is it the most expensive? No, it's absolutely worth what you pay. I mean, you've got CDNs built in, staging sites. You can still get in and do some of the database management if you need to go that route, but most people won't. You know, just connecting domains is so easy at an SSL. It just makes it simple. And then they've got blueprints where you can create like a stamp of your site, like the basics, the framework, like yeah. the foundation and you can just replicate <laughs> it. So when you start a new site, I can pick my, my blueprint. It's already got Divi installed. It's got the, the plugins that I use on every site, like the bare minimums, all the API keys are in there. So when I fire up a site, I'm not looking at WordPress. I'm lo not basic WordPress. I'm looking at, the basic Divi installation, then I can go to town. Talk about efficiency. I mean, that's how as a All about freelancer it. agency, you really accelerate by your base set of tools and you're not starting at zero. It makes a lot of sense. Absolutely. You mentioned you have a design eye, which is something I don't have actually. Like, so how, when did you realize you had that, um, that like uh, interest or, you know, talent or just passion for design? I don't know if there was a single, a single time, you know, I think when I got back into WordPress, you know, I really started looking at sites and it's, and I started getting into, you know, studying conversions and looking at successful designs and sites that people admired. And I was like, you know, these are the ones that are winning awards. These are the ones that people talk about from a user experience. So let me, let me focus on those. And uh, when I started looking at, 
little pieces, you know, the menus, the, the simplicity, the spacing, all those different things, it got me more interested in design. So although I've never been like formally trained on any of that stuff, you know, I, I look at so much of it, whether it's looking at dribble, you know, talking to other people that I, I'm friends with who are designers and just getting some best practices. It's helped me kind of develop that eye. And it de- I don't think it, it definitely didn't come naturally, but it's been learned. That's cool. Well, what, um, you said it, it took a while to build a course. What was, what was the, uh, when you decide I'm going to do it, can you tell us about the decision and how you found lifter or heard about that? Like what was your gateway into like, what was the path in like to building a membership site and choosing tools and ultimately deciding on lifter for it? Yeah. Yeah. So a, a ton of research, you know, looking through <clears throat> all of the different membership plugins first and foremost, like I have a, I have a license for restrict content pro, which is, is really good for memberships. Uh, I built out a couple sites using it, actually used it on my site for, for a little while. And, um, you know, whenever I started doing the, the LMS research, honestly, the fact that the core of what you do is free, yeah. um, you know, that was a, that was a big piece, but the, the real one, cause I would have, I mean, I would have paid for whatever to find yeah. the good one, the best one, um, going through, you know, talk about Tim Streifler and David Blackman, they've got, um, WP gears where their, their courses are. And I went through that Dibby business expert course and they use lifter. And, um, you know, just talking with David, I asked him, you know, I was asking him what, what platform did he use? You know, what did he think? What was his experience with it? You know, how easy is it to, to really kick things up and, and build out the content? And he's like, dude, he's like, there's nothing. He's like, we've tried, a, we've tried so many of them. He's like, there's nothing that makes it as easy as lifter. It's just that simple. And so like, when he, when he said that he kind of gave it, you know, that's the endorsement I needed. You know, somebody who's, who's doing some really good things in the Divi space, you know, his, products are really good you know he's got a lot of a lot of stuff out there his courses are great he's just you know when you when you find somebody that who's kind of farther along the road that you want to be on you look to them and say like okay i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna follow some of this this framework because i don't want to just stumble and make a bunch of mistakes let me let me take what works supercharge my my journey <laughs> Which really brings us full surface circle on the episode and like why you built the course is to help other people accelerate and choose a good stack and, uh, you know, build their foundation. So that course is called Divi Foundation. You can find it at academy.keganlaniermedia.com. If you're listening on the podcast or watching this on, on YouTube, we'll have links down below for that. Keegan's uh, WordPress uh, agency site is keeganlinearmedia.com. Any other way the good people of the internet can connect with you? And if you also, if you have any other final words for the people, let's go. Sure. Yeah. So the connection points, I mean, um, everywhere except for Twitter, it's at Keegan Lanier Media. So Facebook, um, Instagram, pretty much everywhere. On Twitter, it's Keegan L Media. That's probably where I'm the most active. Conversation can flow free. Find me. Let's talk. Um, you know, as far as final words or parting words, like if there's, if there's something you have an interest in trying to do it, whether it's, whether it's building courses or, or podcasts or a product service, you know, for plugins or, or layouts or whatever it is, go try it. Like why, why waste another, another second? Go build it. If it, if it flops, it flops, but at least you did it because you wanted to give it a shot. And that's what I'm doing here. And just ended up with a with a five different things stack you know? <laughs> love it love it so go check out keegan lanier media.com keegan thanks for coming on the show i really appreciate it and wish you chris. all the best on your your next adventures and your path to freedom chris i appreciate it man this has been a blast thanks for having me and that's a wrap for this episode of lms cast i'm your guide chris badgett i hope you enjoyed the show This show was brought to you by Lifter LMS, the number one tool for creating, selling, and protecting engaging online courses to help you get more revenue, freedom, and impact in your life. Head on over to lifterlms.com and get the best gear for your course creator journey. Let's build the most engaging results getting courses 
on the internet. <laughs>